couple of months ago, I was in an MBA class, and one of my students from China gave me a very interesting example. He was in Indonesia. He was originally based in Shanghai, quite very senior. His company sent him to Indonesia to do some business, and he ended up in a dinner with the president of a ch、uh, Chinese company. And during the dinner, the president of the Chinese company told my student that compared to the、uh, Chinese workers, Indonesian workers, they don't work as hard. So I have to basically get people from China to do the job because the workers from China can do it in three months. That Indonesian would take six months. So my student told me that after he had the dinner, he came home and he had a call with his mother. Mother is in China. He told the story to his mother, and the mother gave a very interesting anecdote to the, my, my student. His mother told him that you know, in 1990s, the biggest employer in Shanghai was Bao Steel. So, supposedly, in mid 1990s, Japanese companies came to restructure the steel company, and they brought a lot of Japanese workers. Exactly the same reason. Supposedly, Chinese workers were lazy. They take breaks very often. They take lunches. They take tea, and they read newspaper. So the point that my Chinese students was telling me and to the rest of the class was that actually what we are talking about Indonesians today is what the Japanese were talking about the Chinese then. The reason I liked that example very much is because what we call culture. Is often driven by the reality of the situation. If you change the incentives, people's habits will change. It's not the other way around. So you have to understand why people behave in a certain way, what their issues are, and it's、uh, often once we talk about big cultural difference, it becomes very difficult for us to handle. My own experience is that cultural differences, I don't think, matter that much. You have to understand the basic understanding. You have to respect the people, but it's often a shortcut way of saying that oh, this cannot be done. It's not like that. Even in Bangladesh, where I'm from, I used to believe that people in my country are lazy because I grew up in 1980s Bangladesh, where most of the state-owned enterprises and the bosses used to take evening nap. And then I came to Singapore in 1999, and I saw all the roads were being constructed by workers from Bangladesh at two o'clock in the afternoon when the sun is right there. So it completely shattered my own stereotype about my own people. I realized the people I was around, they were lazy, not Bangladeshis. So the same thing is, if we can create the infrastructure, if we create the incentives, people will behave differently. Of course, there are some basic, fundamental cultural differences. For example, we don't drink in Bangladesh. Generally speaking, Muslims do not like to drink. We do not drink alcohol. No, some do, but you have to understand certain basic things. So, but those are simple. Those are basically simply at the cosmetic level, like changing your jacket. The most important thing is basic respect for people. If you have respect for people, people can see that. That's the best way for you to make them work for you. So the fundamental thing is the respect, and if you don't have respect, they can tell that too.